Today we've got a nice problem from a 2012 math contest in Argentina. So let's see the setup. We want to first define two sequences of natural numbers. So we'll call them a sub n and b sub n, and they're defined as follows. So a sub n is the greatest perfect square that is less than or equal to n, whereas b sub n is the least perfect square which is bigger than n. And then after we have those definitions, we'd like to determine the following finite sum. And that's uh, 1 over a sub 1 times b sub 1 plus 1 over a sub 2 times b sub 2 added all the way up to 1 over a sub 600 times b sub 600. Okay, so, well, I guess like looking at this, you might think, well, what's important about stopping at 600? And we'll see that in the end, it makes the calculation work out really nicely. Okay, so let's get started with this. And the way that we'll get started is with a chart of values of a n and b n, just to get some sort of idea for what's going on here. Okay, so let's start making this chart. Okay, so I've got a decent portion of my chart built, and now we're gonna have n equals one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. And now, well, let's apply the rule for generating a n and b n to fill in the blanks. So what's the smallest perfect square less than or equal to one? Well, it's gonna be one. Then the smallest perfect square less than or equal to two will also be one. And then the same thing for three. That's the smallest perfect square less than or equal to three. But the smallest perfect square less than or equal to four is obviously equal to four because four is a perfect square. And then, well, we'll have four repeated up until we hit nine. So here we have four, 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 and four. But once we hit nine, the smallest perfect square less than or equal to nine is nine. So we'll have nine here. And then for uh, n equals 10, we'll also have nine. Okay, so I think here it's interesting that we've got three repetitions of one. We have five repetitions of four. And then, well, let's see, we'll have repetitions of nine from, well, nine up to 16. So that'll be seven repetitions of nine. So it looks like we're getting repetitions as consecutive odd numbers. So that's interesting to think about. Now let's look at the values of b sub n. So b sub one will be the least perfect square bigger than one, so that'll be the number four. Here, b sub two is four, b sub three is four as well. Because again, the first perfect square that you see after each of those numbers is four. But now let's go to b sub four. Well, that's gonna be nine, because we've got a strict greater than here. So here we'll have 9, 9, 9, 9, and 9. And then after that, we're going to have 16 and 16. And then we'll have five more copies of 16 as well, just as we had five copies of 9 after that. Okay, so let's start writing down the first couple of terms of this sum and see what we have here. So let's see, we're gonna have one over four plus one over four plus one over four. That's the first three terms. And then after that, we're gonna have one over 36 plus one over 36, one over 36, one over 36, one over 36. So that's five copies of one over 36. And as we discussed before, we're gonna have one over, well, nine times 16, but that's 144. And well, we saw that we would have seven copies of that. So let's just put a dot, dot, dot here, and let's say we'll have seven copies. And let's, let, let's also point out that we've got five copies here of one over 36, and three copies of one over Four. Okay, well, let's see if we can generalize this a little bit and also maybe answer the question, why do we have an odd number of each of these chunks? Well, we have an odd number of each of these chunks because the distance from one perfect square to the next perfect square is an odd number.
And you can see that over here via a pretty simple calculation. So notice if we were to have the distance between m plus one squared and m squared, so that's the distance between two consecutive perfect squares, well that pretty simply simplifies to two m plus one. So that's why we're getting consecutive odd numbered chunks here. Okay, so anyway, let's maybe write down what's happening in a bigger picture. So I'll just put here that this is the bigger picture. So I'll take this sum right here. So I'll have one over a1 times b1, add it all the way up to one over a600 times b600. Well, so that's gonna look something like this. So we're gonna have three over one squared times two squared. I'm writing here as four as one squared times two squared, and then I'm just combining all those together. And then the next chunk will give us five over uh, two squared times three squared. Again, two squared times three squared is obviously equal to six squared, which is 36, and I've combined them together into this five. And then the next will be seven over three squared times four squared. And I think you can guess next will be nine over four squared times five squared. And then, well, where is that gonna end? Well, notice that 600 is gonna definitely lie between two perfect squares because 600 itself is kind of obviously not a perfect square. So let's notice that 600 is less than 625, which is 25 squared, but it's bigger than 576, which is 24 squared. And then furthermore, we can take this 24 squared and express it as the sum of the first 23 odd numbers. So this is equal to one plus three plus five added all the way up to two times 23 plus one. So you can check that the first n odd numbers add up to the n plus first perfect square. So that's what we're seeing here. So the first 23 odd, odd, odd numbers add up to 24 squared. But notice here that we don't have a chunk of just one term. So that means we're gonna have to stop short a little bit. We'll have to stop at 575. That'll be the number of terms that we get here. Okay, so anyway, let's put that together over here. So our last chunk will be two times 23 plus one over, so let's see what it'll be. It'll be 23 squared times 24 squared. Okay, and well, like I just mentioned, how many terms do we have here? Well, we have three plus five plus seven plus nine, added all the way up to two times 23 plus one total terms. But like I also said, that'll be 24 squared minus one by this well-known formula that the sum of odd perfect squares equals, or that the sum of odd numbers equals a perfect square. Okay, so anyway, this is gonna be 575 because that's one less than 24 squared, like I said again. Okay, great. And then we're gonna have some leftover terms. So notice that we don't go all the way to 525, but we'll go between 575 and 600. But all of those numbers will be the same because they're all like the first bit of a certain chunk. And so the next bit will be one, or something over 24 squared times 20 five squared. Okay, and exactly how many of those do we have? Well, it's gonna be the number of numbers between 576 and 600, but that's gonna be exactly 25. So we've got 25 of those. Okay, but notice that that can be simplified a bit. Notice that we can cancel this square out and put a one in the numerator. 
And then furthermore, we can put all of these terms together into like one sum, which is maybe a little bit easier to work with. And this is the sum as n goes from one up to 23 of two times n plus one over n squared times n plus one squared. Okay, so that's the yellow under brace there. And then that'll be plus one over 24 squared times just 25, not 25 squared because of that cancellation. So let's see what we have. Our goal sum right here is equal to this combination. So let's take that and see what we'll get. Okay, so this is where we ended on the last board. A nice like expression that is equivalent to our goal expression. Maybe something that's easier to work with. And now we'll look at this sum and think about the duality between sums and integrals and how you would integrate a function that looks like this, which would be via partial fraction decomposition, and perhaps we could create some sort of telescoping action via partial fraction decomposition here. So that's our hope. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we have 2n plus 1 over n squared times n plus 1 squared, and we wish to decompose this as a over n plus b over n squared plus c over n plus 1 plus d over n plus 1 squared. So let's recall we have to build up to the largest power of each linear term that we have there. So now let's multiply by the denominator of the left-hand side to maybe turn this rational equation into a polynomial equation. What will that leave us with? Well, over here we'll have 2n plus 1 equals, well, it's going to be a times n times n plus 1 squared plus b times n plus 1 squared, and then plus c times n squared times n plus 1, and then plus d times n squared. So kind of a lot's going on here, but I think we can sift through it pretty easily. Notice that the right-hand side is a cubic. So that means that uh, we will at most have cubic terms involved. So I've got an n cubed term. Then I'll also have an n squared term, an n term, and a constant term, which I'll just denote as the number one. And now let's extract, well, the n cubed terms, the n squared terms, the n terms, and the constant terms from both sides of this equation. So starting with the n cubed terms. But notice the n cubed terms are simply a plus c over on the right hand side if you were to multiply this out. And on the left hand side we have, well, none of them, so that's zero. And then what about the n squared terms? Well, let's see, we have 2a from this first term, and then we'll have plus just b from this second term, and then plus C and then plus D. So we have that's equal to zero. And then let's see, what about the N terms? Well, note that we'll have an A and then we'll have, let's see, here we'll have plus two times B. And then, well, there are no N terms here and no N terms uh, uh, connected to the D either. Okay, so we have that's equal to, well, no, that's not equal to zero, that's equal to two. Okay, good. And then what about the constant terms? Well, note that we do not have a constant term here, we don't have a constant term here, and we don't have a constant term here. We only have a constant term attached to the b times n plus one squared, and that constant term is b. So in fact, we get b is equal to, Let's see, it's got to be equal to 1. So I think the fact that we quickly get b equal to 1, that'll allow us to rip through the rest of it. So plugging b equal to 1 into the equation that's just right above, we'll see that a must be equal to 0. Okay, so now then if a is equal to 0 into the n cubed term, that'll tell us that c is also equal to zero. Okay, so that's actually really good news. Now that only leaves us to determine what d is. But let's see, if 
a is equal to zero, so that's gone, and c is equal to zero, so that's gone, and b is equal to one, and we have d plus one is equal to zero, then that means that d is equal to negative one. So that means that this decomposes as follows. So this is gone, this has a one here, this is gone, and then this has a negative one. Well, that's actually really good news because that gives us a nice telescoping action. So let's write that down. So this is gonna give us the sum as n goes from one to 23 of one over n squared minus the sum as n goes from one to 23 of one over n plus one squared, and then plus one over 24 squared times 25. Let's observe that this first term has everything in common with this second term, except this first term has the n equals one term, which is different. And this last term has the n equals 23 term, which is different. So extracting that bottom and that top here, we'll have a one over one, which is one. And here we'll have a minus one over 23 plus one, which is 24 squared. So observe that everything else cancels. The n equals two term here cancels with the n equals one term here. The n equals three term here cancels with the n equals two term here. All the way up, the n equals 23 term here cancels with the n equals 22 term here. Okay, so we have that and then plus one over 24 squared times 25. Okay, so now let's give this a common denominator. So a common denominator would be 24 squared times 25. So we'll multiply this by 25 and 25. And then putting those two things together, we see we get a one minus, so it's gonna be one minus 25, so that's gonna be 24, so it'll be so it'll be one minus 24 over 24 squared times 25. But now that's gonna cancel a little bit to, let's see, one minus one over 24 times 25. But let's see, 24 times 25 is gonna be 600. So in fact, we have 599 over 600. And that'll be our final answer. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.